In this video tutorial, we're going to be covering the syntax of CSS. We're going to look at how it differs from HTML, although they both share very similar terminology. So this slide is just going to introduce us into the basic syntax here. This, what you see on screen, is an entire CSS rule. So let's walk through it step by step. This first portion here is what is called the selector. And the selector is responsible for targeting a specific element on your HTML page. In this case, the name of the selector would be a tag based selector and it's a header one. So this would be a header one selector. The next two pieces here you'll see are what I call curly braces and they simply define the declaration set. The next piece here is what we call the property. Notice how in CSS the property is followed by a semicolon. Following the property we have the value and notice how the value is followed by a uh, semicolon. I think I said the property backwards. The property is followed by a colon and the value by a semicolon. Make sure you understand the distinction there. And the entire property and value set together is what we call a CSS declaration. Uh, you can see here this H1 CSS rule has two separate declarations. CSS rules can have one declaration, they can have 15 declarations, and we usually put each one on its own line. And then the entire thing altogether is what we call a CSS rule. So just like in HTML where we tabbed over one space for a child tag, we do the same thing in CSS. Um, inside of the CSS rule between the two curly, curly braces, we'll tab over one tab space to kind of keep those all formatted and it helps us to easily distinguish between the selector and the different declarations inside of a CSS tag. On this next slide, we're going to look at the different types of syntax for the actual declarations themselves as they can vary between longhand and shorthand. Now you can see here on the left, this rule for the header one tag is showing the what we call longhand declaration. So this header one has a property of padding dash top and a value of five pixels, property of padding dash right, padding dash bottom, padding dash left. You can see that each one of these are separated. However, there's an easier way to write this in CSS as opposed to writing every single one of the padding options. We can switch over to one of these three shorthand variants on the right hand side. So you can see this first rule up here just says padding and the first value is the top, the second value is the right, the third value is the bottom, and the fourth value is the left. So you can see this is much more succinct and compact than writing them all out by hand this way. So this is a shorthand variant for the padding property in CSS. Here's another variant of that, even shorter. So this just says padding and the first value, if there's only two values in the padding property, the first one refers to the top and bottom padding and the second one refers to the left and right. And if we just have one value in the padding declaration, that just means that 10 pixels are applied to all sides. So top, right, bottom, and left. So you can see with CSS, there's several different ways to do these declarations and you'll kind of learn as you learn the different properties of CSS which properties do have shorthand variants and which properties don't.